Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. On today's tutorial, how we demonstrate how to draft an asymmetrical flared skirt. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 clothing tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, Kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you! I'll be working with the following measurements. Waist circumference 31 inches. Hip circumference 38 inches. Desired skirt length 25 inches. So I have here this pattern paper which I have already laid out on the table and I have already two inches margin at the top and on the left hand side of the pattern paper. I will now draft a basic sketch pattern. I will go ahead and draw a rectangular box on this pattern paper that will contain both the front and the back sketch patterns since I will be drafting both of them together within this rectangular box. To know the width of the rectangular box, it is the hip circumference divided by 2 plus 2 inches for ease and this is 38 divided by 2 plus 2 inches for ease and this is equal to 21 inches. So I will go ahead to measure and mark 21 inches like this. I will draw a vertical line downwards. To know the length of the rectangular box, the length will be the desired skirt length, which is 25 inches. So I will go ahead to measure and mark 25 inches like this. I will draw a horizontal line across. Next, I will divide the rectangular box into two equal halves vertically, like this. This side will be the center back, while this other side will be the center front. I will now measure and mark 9 inches from the upper starting line downwards. This is the waist to hip measurement. The standard value is 8 to 9 inches, but you can also measure this directly on your customer. I will draw a horizontal line across and this line is the hip line. Next, I will calculate my waist circumference plus 1 inch for ease divided by 4 plus additional 1 inch for the waist dart and this is 31 plus 1 divided by 4 plus additional 1 inch for the waist dart and this is equal to 9 inches. So on the upper starting line, which is now the waistline, I will measure and mark 9 inches like this starting from the center back and also the center front. Next, I will calculate my hip circumference plus 1 inch for ease divided by 4 and this is 38 inches plus 1 inch divided by 4 and this is equal to 9.75 inches. So on the hip line, I will measure and mark 9.75 inches like this starting from the center back and also the center front. At the end, I will also measure and mark 9.75 inches like this, starting from the center back and also the center front. This 9.75 inches is the same value that I marked on the hip line. I will now go ahead and connect these points together like this. To know the position of the waist that, I will simply divide the bust pan measurement by 2 and this is 8 inches divided by 2 and this is equal to 4 inches. So I have gone ahead to draw the waist that 
and are measured four inches from the center front and the center back at the upper starting line, which is also the waistline. After doing this, I measured a one inch wide dart on both sides of the four inch marks and the dart ends two inches above the hip line. At the center back, I slanted it by half an inch and the slant also ended two inches above the hip line. I also curved the waistline by coming down by half an inch at the center back and also at the center front. I will now go ahead to cut out the front and the back skate patterns. I will cut out the skate band from the main skate patterns. So for the bands, I will measure and mark 2.5 inches like this. And I will draw out the shape of the skirt bands like this. I will label the center back and the side back, the side front and the center front. Then I will cut it out. I will close the waist dart on the two band patterns like this using a cello tape. After doing this, I will trim off the uneven ends and I will also label the band patterns. On the main skirt patterns, I will draw vertical lines from the base of the waist dart down to the end of the skirt pattern, like this. I will slash open the two skirt patterns from the end up to the base of the waist dart. I will close the waist dart like this using the cello tape and this automatically opens up the straight skirt pattern and it becomes a flare or an A-line skirt pattern. I have here this new pattern paper that I've already folded into two. We need the full skirt pattern for the front and the back. I will make use of the A-line skirt patterns. With the center front aligning with the folded edge of the paper, I will paint the front pattern in place like this. I will make the skirt pattern longer by 3 inches because of the asymmetrical design that jumps up at the end at the side of the skirt. I will now cut out the skirt pattern. I will repeat exactly the same thing for the back pattern as well. I will ignore the slanted center back. The center back piece will also be cut on fold, so the slant is not needed for this particular skate design. I will also get rid of the slant at the center back of the band piece. The easiest way to do this is not to slant the center back at all when making the basic skate pattern for this skate. If you are using a ready-made basic skate pattern that you've already wrapped for, do not forget to get rid of the slant at the center back of the skate pattern. This is the full front A-line skirt pattern. I will draw out the middle line of the skirt like this. I will now fold the pattern into four equal sections like this. I will draw out the lines. On the original pattern, this is the hip line. I will mark the hip line on this A-line skirt pattern like this. 
I will now connect these two points together like this using my ruler. Using a glue stick or a cello tape, I will glue the sketch pattern to this new pattern paper at the side like this. From the base of the skate at the side seam, I will go up by 3 inches. Remember the 3 inches extension that we added at the end of the skate pattern. From the 3 inch point, I will go out by 6 inches. I will now connect the hip points to the 6 inch point like this using a ruler. I will cut out the excess paper and I will fix it to the aim like this using my glue stick. You can also use a cello tape. From the center front line, that is from the middle of the front pattern, I will come down 10 inches. I will extend the middle line downwards to the 10 inch point like this. I will connect these two points together like this using my ruler. I will also connect these two points together like this, that is the 6 inch point to the 10 inch point like this, also using my ruler. I will cut it out. So as to avoid confusion while sewing, I will label the sides and the upper part of the pattern. This is the back of the skirt and I've gone ahead to repeat the exact same thing that I did on the front pattern. These are the front and the back pattern pieces and as you can see both the front and the back patterns are identical. So you can use either the front pattern or the back pattern only to make this case. There is no need to draft to, to alter the front and the back patterns at the same time. You can either use the front pattern or the back skirt pattern for this skirt. I will now go ahead and tape both the front and the back side cuts together like this. Or you can just pick one of the two side cut pieces and cut the side of the side cut piece on fold. It will still give you the same result. So that's it guys, we are done. These are all the pattern pieces needed to make an asymmetrical A-line skirt. Stay tuned for my next tutorial where I will cut and sew all these pattern pieces together on my fabric. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are interested in sewing, and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.